Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. I'm back on the Tennessee River this morning to do some more drift fishing for catfish. I'm just kind of drifting my way through the spawn right now. It's, it's early June. We got a lot of our big fish on the nest. And so I've just been out here covering water, trying to catch as many fish as I can. So in my last two videos, uh, catfishing videos anyway there, last week I took a section of the river and just started drifting my way downstream, following along that main channel ledge and I had some really good trips, I mean some productive days where I caught a lot of fish. So that first video I covered a small section, the next video I come out picked up right where I left off in it, and today is going to be just a continuation. I am picking up where I left off in that last catfishing video. Now uh, my most recent video I had to reload on bait and so I came out here, got some skipjack, got some white bass, and that's what I'm going to be using today. I'll have those cut up in pieces. I've got a three rod setup I'm going to be using today. Now we'll just kind of rotate in and out these baits to see what the fish are going to prefer. My guess is they're probably going to be all over that skipjack because that is just the, that's the bait to use out here on the Tennessee River. But that white bass is a quality bait too and undoubtedly it's going to get some action as well. So I'm going to get these baits on here and we'll start making our way down. Current flow out here is really light this morning. It's about 0.2 miles an hour right now. So with the light breeze that we have, I may have to kind of supplement my speed here on the kayak just to kind of keep myself following along that break line there on the ledge and, and keep myself going downstream like I want to do. But we'll cover some water this morning. Hopefully get on some more fish. There is the first bait we're going to be using. That's a skipjack head. I'm going to have two rods with skipjack to start with just because I feel like that's going to give me the best opportunity for not only numbers of fish but also bigger fish as well if we come across them. As I mentioned in those two videos last week, this time of year in the spawn we just catching big fish is possible but it's a lot less likely just due to such a large percentage of them being on the nest. But you can't catch them from the couch as I always try to say and I love being out here. I love being out in the water, especially weekdays like I'm out here now. That's a body section of skipjack there. You come out here on the weekdays, early morning hours, I got the place to myself. It's just me, some birds, and the fish. It's just, it's so peaceful and quiet out here. Nowhere else I'd rather be. And so this last rod over here, I'm going to put a piece of white bass on. One of the big perks of using white bass, aside from the fact that it's a quality bait, is that it is a tough bait. It is hard for smaller fish to rip this bait off the hook. And so if you do get on some small fish and they're just down there just pecking and gnawing at it but not big enough to get the whole bait and the hook, they're not going to rip it off. They're not going to strip your hooks clean. That'll happen with your softer baits like shad and skipjack. They'll munch them things up quick. But your white bass is a lot tougher. And yes, it is legal to use them here in Tennessee where I live. We can use any sport fish for bait so long as it meets the size and trill limits and all that good stuff and was caught on rod and reel. So I always get them comments, but people can like it, they can not like it. It's legal here, so I use them. All right, y'all, I'm going to just keep making my way down river. Let's see if we can get on some today. That white bass just got hit. Let's see if he can take it. He's got it. He's swimming with it. Let's pick up on him. Well, two rods baited with skipjack. And the one with white bass is the one that gets eat first. <laughs> Never hurts to have a variety, y'all. If you got multiple baits, use them. I didn't mention it in my intro, I don't think, but right now I'm sitting in 35 feet, and that'll that'll vary as we make our way down through here. I'll adjust my baits accordingly. This first fish here is going to be blue cat. Ooh, he's wound up too. <laughs> oh, that front rod up there got hit. Got a double on. Let me set this one back. Let me set this one back, and we'll we'll grab this one. We just went through some right here already. Look at this rod. There goes the headpiece too. It's getting tapped. 
We own some fish right here. Just working my way along this channel edge. Got these baits suspended right off the bottom. They're up about three feet from the very bottom there. So right now, 35 feet, they're down there. You know, 32, 33 feet in that range. Get this one up here. I think it's another blue cat right here. Feels like it. Yep, it is. Well, that one's wound up too, ain't it? <laughs> All right. Well, let's land the first one here. This one that was hitting the headpiece didn't hook up. We'll land this other fish here that ate the white bass while this one tires himself out and then we'll get some more baits on there and do all over again. All right guys, there is that one right there. Ornery thing, man. He did not want to open his mouth for nothing. Get on out of here, buddy. Thankfully that one there left us the bait, so I'm gonna drop it right back down. And we'll get it back down there before we land this other fish. Here is the second fish of the double, definitely the bigger of the two. Got a nice belly on him. That one ate the skipjack, so we'll let him go. I've got that other piece of white bass already back down there. We'll rebait with a body section of skipjack. And we'll see if we can get us some more, hopefully a little bigger than these two today. See you, pal. There's the next skipjack body piece. Down it goes. Look at there, looky there, that's on the head. Let's pick up on him. I mean, he's just a swimming. Giving him everything he's got. And I'm using my three rods today. I've got two of these Academy Roughneck rods I got on clearance there a few weeks ago. And then I've got a uh, one of my old ugly sticks on there as well. I recently lost the rod and reel overboard. So that's why I'm only going with three. I need to get me a new, another one of these reels, but I can't find them anywhere. Everybody's out of stock, I guess, with the pandemic. They're having trouble getting their supplies re redone. So I gotta keep an eye out. That's a good fish, man. I thought he felt good. I thought he felt good. Yeah, buddy. I told you all, during the spawn, it ain't impossible to catch a, catch a good fish. We looking at one right there. Lady met skipjack head. Oh yeah. <laughs> Folks, that's a good fish right there. That's a good fish anytime. But it's a real good fish here in the month of June. June, it was just the toughest month for catfishing out here in East Tennessee where I fish. And that folks, that's a good one. <laughs> I got that dang, that dang sun is behind me. This kayak has spun around. I ain't gonna get a good picture, but that's all right. I got to enjoy the fight and that's all that matters. All right, I got my pictures there with the other camera, so let's let him go now. He'll go down there and get even bigger. Hopefully we'll see him again someday. See you, pal. Get on out of here. Take off for me. There he goes. <laughs> he didn't know which direction he wanted to go. I know which direction I want to go though. And that is straight down this river channel here to find even more fish today. I'm putting another skipjack head on that rod. That fish had left me the bait, but I guess when I tossed it overboard, that rod right there is getting hit. I guess when I tossed it overboard there after I'd unhooked him, the dang thing fell off. So we're going to lower it back down and I'm going to see if this one right here is hooked up. I believe it might be. It looks like my lines kind of swam out that way get this line set. People ask me why I dip my rod tip down in the water uh, when I'm lowering my baits down. What I'm doing here, y'all, let me redo it. So you'll see me kind of bounce my rod tip up and down. That's me feeling my sinker down there. So now I know my sinker's on bottom. So what I'll do is I'll reel my rod tip down into the water a little bit, lift it up, and set it in the rod holder. So I know now between looking at where my rod tip's at and the water surface and the length of my leader, that my bait is right down there where I want it to be in kind of that two to three foot depth off the bottom. So that's just a, a simple thing that I do just to know where my bait is at down there, make sure I'm at the right depth. 
Are there other ways to do it? I mean, other people have suggested, you know, using line counters on your reels, all that crap. This is real simple and easy. I can set my baits like that and know exactly where they are. So that's why I do that. Let me pick up on this rod now. I think, yeah, he's on there. This one's on there too. And this morning, a lot of fish out here. The last two catfishing trips I have done, a lot of fish. I hadn't got any anything of any decent size before that last big blue. But it has been action packed and today it's looking like it's gonna be the same way. Heck, I ain't even got that camera going. Oh well. We'll lift this sucker on up in here. Oh goodness. Splashing water right in the face. <laughs> if I wasn't awake before, I am now. <laughs> This fish here got the last laugh on me. He's got the hook through the bottom of the lip too there. There we go. All right, well let's get rid of him. And he threw the bait off, so we'll put another piece of skipjack on that. So that's, uh, what is that now, four fish? Four fish we got, three of them have come on the skipjack and one on the white bass. So we'll get another piece of skipjack on here Keep this party going. Here's the next bait there. Skipjack body section with the gut pocket still intact. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what them other fish want, so that's what we'll keep giving them. I gotta reposition myself here. I've kinda, there's a light breeze blowing this way. Well, I've been fighting these fish. It's kind of pushed me off that break line where I want to be. So I'm going to reposition myself here and we'll keep working the edge of the channel down through here. What I'm doing here, y'all, and I apologize for that motor noise. I'm having to use it to move here, but I've got myself going at 0.5 miles an hour and 37 feet of water. You can see here, I'm just following along the edge of this channel as I make my way down river. Right there was a little fish that come up took a look at my bait he didn't eat it right there's another one you can see you probably can't tell on the camera there's some faint lines right here that is my baits that's the graph picking up my baits and those darker marks there is fish that have come up took a look at my baits and then for whatever reason didn't tap them at that point in time but you can see that that's exactly what i'm doing the head got hit there it goes there it goes he's on there i'm just trying to Get myself spun back around. There's a very light breeze out here this morning. I mean, it's not blowing hard at all. But because the current flow is so slow, I'm having trouble keeping myself going down river. I'm having to use my electric motor to supplement a little bit. There's another blue cat. See, that one's got mud up the side of him. He's probably been hunkered down. Here goes that rod too, he got hit. I don't think that one got hooked up. I think he just, I think he hit it, but didn't get the hook. Let's land this one right quick. Nope, that one's getting hit again. Now he's got it. Now he's got it. No, he don't. Well, now he can't make up his mind. One of these times he's gonna get that hook. That's the third time he's hit that thing. I think he finally got the business end of that hook just then. We'll leave that other one sitting over in the rod holder while we tend to this one. I'm guessing this one here is probably not going to be very big if he was struggling that bad to get the bait and the hook. We'll get a look. Yeah, he's just a little fella. Just a little thing. But he's a double, by gosh. That's two back to back. We might get a third one here before we get these two undone. That one gave us our headpiece back. You can see it's still good shape right there. Still got all the meat there, still bleeding. So we'll drop it back down in just a second. There he is. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get this bait down there before we land this other fish on the front rod. It's, it's hooked right. That white bass. <laughs> yeah, I love white bass for bait. Y'all have if you've watched my channel for any length of time. You have seen me hook some really big fish on the white bass. In fact, my biggest flathead ever and my biggest blue cat ever both came on white bass. But if you got options for these bait and these fish down there with skipjack and white bass, 
Most of the time, Skipjack's going to get hit. Well, this one here is a little bit more stingy than the last one. He, he threw our bait off the hook. So we'll, we'll give him the stink eye on the way out <laughs> and stick us another bait on there. I got plenty of bait today, so that's not a big deal. We're not going to run out today. Right here. Finally got another one on the white bass. And wasn't able to bait that other hook yet. And I get this one up here. If, even if he does leave the bait on the hook, I'm going to go ahead and switch it out so we get a fresh piece on there. If I didn't have a surplus of bait, I would reuse this bait again. But again, I've got enough bait today. We're not running out. So we'll go ahead and keep everything fresh. Let's see. Yep, another blue cat. About the same size as that last little one we got. Here is this bait. I'm going to drop it down right fast before we land this other fish. I'm trying to be as efficient as possible out here when you when you get in this kind of action. It's hard to keep three lines going. I don't even miss that fourth rod right now. My bank account's going to miss the money when I have to replace that reel. But I ain't missing the fourth rod right now because I can't keep these three in the water. There he is. He flung that bait off, but that's that's all the same. I was going to replace it anyway. So we'll get rid of him. And I'm y'all, I'm kind of just, I'm sitting here right now. Between the current flow being so light and the, the light breeze that's out here right now blowing me upstream, I'm moving at 0.1 miles an hour according to the graft, and I honestly don't know which direction I'm going. So we're going to get this bait on here. Yeah, I'm going to get myself spun around and just use the electric motor to supplement and keep myself trolling down through here. Try to keep my speed still slow, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 miles an hour. I don't want to be moving too quickly, but I'll still just try to try to cover some water and hopefully come across some big fish today. That's my, my real reasoning out here for drifting these last few trips is to try to just cover as much water as possible and put my baits in front of as many big fish as possible. And uh, I already got one here this morning. Tell you what let's do let's put that white bass head on that rod i was going to put another body piece on there but we'll we'll put a head piece on and see if we can't improve the quality of the fish we're getting right here that goes that skipjack head oh goodness man I'll turn that electric motor off right quick so we can hear what's going on here Been on this headpiece today, ain't he? I'll get him up here and take a look at him. He hit it pretty hard, but now I'm thinking maybe he ain't as big as I thought he was. I don't know. He's well, about the same size, I guess. Another dink. When I first picked up on the rod, he felt a little bigger than he turned out to be. <laughs> Y'all, I ain't hardly made any progress down through here. I mean, I'm just, these fish are just all over this section of the river right now. All over. They have been, well, since I was out here last week. There he is. I think this other one over here that hit this piece of white bass may have it. Yeah, he does. He does have it. Yeah. He was hitting it there while I was about to land this one, and I thought, well, maybe he didn't have it. So I went ahead and we'll take care of him. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun when it's like it. I don't care if they ain't very big. When you got all these rods just constantly going down, it's fun. Yeah, that in there, he eat the white bass head, but he ain't, I ain't very big either. Let's set him back. Let's set him back and get this bait situated. Again, this bait here, you can see it's still in good shape. Uh, I think that's the second fish on that particular head, but don't matter. I'm gonna send it down and we'll keep using it until it gets torn up or gets the meat and the blood there eat out of it. It'll still catch a fish like that. All right, guys, there's my bait. That white bass head's still looking pretty good, too. 
got our blue cat there on it. Send him home. And I'm gonna get it back down here on the hook. And we're gonna catch another fish on that thing. These headpieces, they don't always, I mean, they don't just catch the big fish. Obviously the small ones like them too, as we've seen here today. But they're, they're the toughest part of, of any bait, really. You can usually get the bait back. But you can see all that juice and blood and the meat there. That's still a good bait. I'm gonna send it back down and try to get myself turned around to keep working down river. I don't know how far we'll make it before the next fish comes along. There goes that front rod. Let's pick up on it. Let's pick up on it. Uh, he's going back up river here. He's gonna spin me around. I kind of had a little, just a little bit of a lull. Maybe 10, 15 minutes here and I've made some progress down this ledge. It's just a matter of time before we get back on them. And they're all up and down this stretch of the river right now. They're just stacked in here. And I'm out here taking advantage and having some fun this morning. Where's he at here? Yep, another blue. Same size we've been getting. They are just cookie cutter size dinks, but man, there's a lot of them. Oh, oh, there goes that rod. There goes the head, y'all. I don't know if that hooked up or not. He tugged on it, but I don't know if he got the hook. There's that old ugly blue cat right there. Don't think that hooked up. Don't think he did. I've got some more fish here on my graph. I'll show you if the glare ain't too bad. You can see right there, there's some more fish that we're sitting right on top of right now. So I would not be surprised at all if one of these other rods goes down here in a second. White bass head is getting messed with but not eaten. He may have it that time. He wants it. Can he get it? I think he may have it, y'all. Let's pick up on him. Let's pick up on him. Yeah. He got it. It took him a minute, but he got it. <laughs> oh, this one behind me got hit too here. He didn't hook up. Another one in front got hit. There he goes. All right. Well, let's deal with the one in our hand here first. Get him up here. And we'll pick up on that front rod. I think that one on the front's definitely hooked. Yep, a little blue there. It's a small one. Let's pick up on the front. Surely this one here's a little bigger than the other one over there. I kinda had a little dry spell. A few hundred yards without getting any dink taps or nothing, but I knew it was many fish are in here. It was a matter of time before they found my baits again. Or we found them. Yep, another blue. All right, let's land these things. Well, there's the fish number one of the double. Now let's pull in number two. Oh, he just flung that bait off right there too. Oh, going his hide. I thought I was getting it back. Let's bring him on in. Oh, 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 oh goodness. Goodness now. <laughs> he wasn't ready to come in. He said, heck with this. He said, I'm getting out of here. All right. Now that you've calmed down, we'll unhook you and let you go. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'll tell you what. I think I'm going to wrap up the video portion of this day. I'm not done fishing yet. I'm still going to cover some ground or cover some water here and keep catching these fish. But this video, as many fish as I've caught out here this morning, it's probably going to be a longer video as is. It's going to take me quite a while to edit. So I'm just going to leave that front camera going in case I hook any monsters down through here. But otherwise, this will probably just be the end of the video. And uh, yeah, it has been a fun morning out here thus far, though. I mean, it has just been... The last three catfishing trips, I, 
haven't got great quality during that time other than that one good one I got out here this morning but man it has just been non-stop action I just cannot keep these baits in the water hardly for the next fish getting on so it's a good time I hope you enjoyed the video I'll see you again soon thanks for watching